I'm Kate, and this is my booktube. Today we're going to be talking about Frost File by Amanda Hawking. This is the false book of the Canaan Chronicles and is a sequel series to the Trill Chronicles. Now, I've already made a video to the Trill Chronicles, so I'll put that in the description below, but this is going to be my, um, explanation of Frostfire and how much I liked it. This will be a independent book check for my honors English class. So let's get on with it. So the book takes place in Doldestam, which is in Canada, and it's a kingdom of trolls who live there freely. They are called the Canaan. And to get money without having to do a lot of really hard work, they they put their children into the human world, switch them out with human babies, and have them live there. And then when they're old enough, they have trackers come and get the babies, you know, the kids back, now about 18, with their money that they got from their parents when they turned 18, and they come back to the, the troll kingdom of Joldestam, and they live their lives. The main character of the book, Bryn, is a tracker. Her job is to find these humans and bring them home safely. And she does that very well. Bryn stands out a lot in the book. She, as you can see, has blonde hair and blue eyes, just like me. And you'd think, oh, well, that's not that weird. That's a very normal hair color and you know, eye color. She looks normal, right? Not to the trolls. In the Canaan kingdom almost everybody has brown hair which is not this and brown eyes which is also not a no a weird you know complexion so they don't stand out next to humans but she stands out with them because there's only about two or three people in her entire kingdom that has her look and one of them is her mom so, she stands out a lot. She works really hard to make sure that her differences don't stop her from getting what she wants, though. Because she's a tracker, but she wants to become a god of the king. And that is a very prestigious job. There's only, like, 20 of these gods, and you have to be the best of the best to get them. So, with the fact that she stands out so much, it would be really hard for her to get this job. But she works so hard that we... All believe that it will happen. Another main character of the book is Constantine. He is a god of the king. He has the job that Bryn wants. And when she's about 15, she meets him at a ball. And she's like, oh my gosh, he's absolutely amazing. And then he goes and stabs her father. Good job. Her father is the the um, Chancellor. So, when you stab the Chancellor, you're automatically a traitor to the entire kingdom. So, she he has to run away and try to get away so nobody can catch him. So now, now that Bryn is about 20 in the book, she is now a full train tr tracker and doing all of everything she's always wanted to, you know, besides being a god of the king and she's happy what she's doing but then Constantine comes and he tries to steal the young troll that she's trying to save from the human world she's trying to get get him and so is he but he plans on killing him or something else bad we don't really know yet and so she has to save him from that so Constantine is pretty much the guy you never expect to be the bad guy but is always in Bryn's way. Another main character of the book is Ridley. Ridley is the boss of Bryn. He tells her what people to go find. He basically tells her everything to do. And she follows his orders very, very well. But here's the reason he's so important to the story. He is the person that she is in love with. But she won't say it. Because she doesn't believe in love. She thinks that 
love is a deterrent to her job. And that, sh that should never happen. And the too many bad things would happen if she opened up to her feelings that Ridley. And he, we're all pretty sure, has the feelings back. So that just makes us it, it very, very interesting. You can all figure out this is a YA book, right? You know, Forbidden Love. It's either a YA book or a classic. I think that the main conflict of this book is probably a self-conflict. Because she's not sure if she has all these feelings that she's not sure about. She's not sure if she's truly in love with Ridley and what she should do. So she, she can't make a decision in her head. And she's also not sure about Constantine. She thinks that he might not be the person who is responsible for everything that's going on. She thinks that he might be a monkey. You know, be a monkey to the bad guy, doing what he's told, and just looking like the main person. But what is she supposed to say? I don't think I should kill Constantine because I don't think that the guy who stabbed my father is the bad guy? She is so confused in her head that she's not sure about anything. There's this quote on page 222 that explains, you know, how this is a big deal in the book. It goes, Why didn't he kill you? Ridley asked. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad he didn't, but... He's tried to kill your dad. He killed Emma. He obviously doesn't care if he gets blood on his hands. So why leave you alive? The fact that he won't kill Brynn is a very important fact to the plot. It makes you wonder, why is he doing what he's doing? And if he doesn't actually want to kill people, then what is he doing this for? The story takes place in Cold Doldestan in Canada, and it takes place in the present, but take away from the fact that everybody walks around with coats, and to get a hold of another tracker, you have to use a phone. You don't really notice the time period. Those little, you know, Easter eggs about new music artists and listening to the music, like one person's probably listening to Call Me Maybe. But otherwise, it doesn't really make a difference. Everybody in the Kane society, as much as they like shiny things, like phones and big computers and widescreen TVs and jewelry, they don't use technology because they feel more comfortable writing things down and putting them into a file cabinet than using a computer. They just like to look at the computer, they don't actually use it. So... This story could take place in the 15th century if it wanted to, but it does take place in the present. So, I guess it doesn't make a big difference. Closer to the end of the book, Bryn and Ridley have to go to a neighboring troll empire. It's the empire that Bryn is originally from, her mom's side of the family, and it's the reason that she has blonde hair and blue eyes. So she goes, and the reason she's going is because the queen is missing. And they're trying to figure out if the queen's disappearance has anything to do with Constantine. The whole Constantine um, debacle is very important to the story because we don't know why he's doing what he's doing. We don't know if he's the person behind it, and we don't know what he's doing it for. So we don't know if he's just taking people from one troll kingdom, or if he's going after all of them. And so, when the queen goes missing after all of these young Canaan have gone missing, you have to suspect it was him. The book ends with Constantine getting caught by Bryn and having to be put in a jail, but we can't find the queen. And then, Constantine gets out, and you find out that the person who's been behind all of this is actually... The person who has tried to hurt this kingdom forever just a little while ago, he had a gigantic war with the Canaan, and it killed Ridley's dad. His name is Victor, and he is the he is behind all of this. He is the reason Constantine has been killing people and capturing people, and he is the reason that. 
Constantine tried to kill her dad. So now she finally has a reason for why Constantine is doing what he's doing. The question is if she still isn't sure about Constantine. Does she still think that he could be helped? Does she still think that he's a bad guy and that he needs to be put away? Because Constantine is no longer in jail. Victor got him out. The entire storyline is seeing Constantine again and then not killing him or him not killing her and being so confused about why. Why these things are happening. This book doesn't take place in the black or the white, it takes place in the gray. And so it's very interesting. It's also, I also would tell people to read this book because I love the Trill series. And if you want more of the Trill, the Trill Chronicles, if you want more of that amazing drama between kingdoms that I love so much in the Trill Chronicles, read the Gaming Chronicles. At least the first one, I haven't read the other ones to tell you if it's really good. But I think the first one is good. I think that if you want drama between kingdoms, if you want that all that racism and all that stuff, but without it being real stuff, without being humans, if you want the drama, but without the consequence, I'd read the Canaan Chronicles. I was engaged with this book because it had the suspense, it has the drama, it has the love, it's everything that one of my favorite books would have. Obviously all my favorite books are young adult novels, but it has everything. It is a very good book because one moment she's thinking about who she wants to be with, you know, if she wants to be with anyone, and next she's thinking, oh my gosh, should I kill him? And it's very interesting because Brynn is a very strong woman. She does what she wants to do, she does what she believes in, and now she has to, she just has to find out who she believes in. So I'm very engaged in a person who will do what she feels is right, but just isn't sure what that is. Because isn't that everyone? There's no strong women who just know what to do. They just know how they feel. That's not what a strong woman is. A strong woman is somebody who may not know how she feels, but We'll figure it out, because she's not going to listen to what somebody else thinks. Another important quote, or at least to me, from this book, is on page 213. It, Constantine's talking, and he says, You were that little blonde girl, and that alone made you stand out. But you were always fighting twice as hard as anybody else. He paused grinning down at me. And I'd always catch you staring at me. This quote is important in so many ways. It shows that Constantine knows who Brynn was, even when she was a young 15-year-old. It shows that what she's been doing, how she's been walking, has got people to notice, and that she's doing what she's always wanted. That the king and the queen will notice and one day they might even make her a god. And it also shows that there is so much, there's something going on between Constantine and Brynn, something underneath, that none of them completely know what it is, but they were both staring at each other. So, something's going on. So it, it's a whole other layer to the story. What's going on with Constantine and Brynn? What's going on with Ridley and Brynn? What is going on? The, these are the questions. What will happen to this kingdom? What's Victor doing? And why is this all important? Why is all... Why is whole life important? Why is Brynn the main character? That's what I'm really wondering right now. She's a strong, independent woman. She's a strong, independent woman. But how is she connected to this entire storyline? How is she connected to the kingdom? And what's going to happen next? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up, comment below. I'd really like to know how you think. And with that, I'll see you later.